Now call to order. I'll begin, I'll begin by confirming member access. As a preliminary matter, this is Shashi Manon, Chairman of the Council on Aging Board. Please permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. And let's start with Barbara. Hi. I'm here. Uh, Virginia is not here. Uh, Louise Russell. Present, yeah. Louise. Zoya. Yeah. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Present. And Betsy has got an absence notification. Uh, from the staff, we've got uh, we've got Holly as our director. She's present. And present. Holly, you're going to say something. Uh, oh wait, I, I forgot. Norma Giamantaro has is also present. Yeah. And yeah. we've got Christine Rardi. Here. Okay. And we've got uh, Elizabeth Peter Leichner, right? Here. Present. That was perfect. Okay. Is it Peter or Peter? How do you pronounce it? Peter Leitner. Okay. Peter Leitner. Okay. So good morning. This is this open meeting of the town of the Council on Aging Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020. Due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus, the order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow, follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting of the Council on Aging Board, which is convening by video conference uh, using Google Meeting as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda, but before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules. I, the chair, will introduce each board member or staff member who has a lead note for this particular item as guest speaker associated with the item on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members first and to the staff members, inviting each by name to provide any comment or questions. I will then call upon the members to offer a motion and then for a second. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute and unmute your phone or mute your computer when you're not speaking so as not to trigger your camera feed or background noise. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote will be taken in this meeting, will be conducted by roll call vote. Shall we begin? Does, does anybody out there know the correct pronunciation of colloquy? I, I'm, I feel I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Co colloquy? Co what is that? Am I saying it right? No comment. Anybody? I think, I think the first time you said it was correct. Colloquy? Yeah. Which we're talking together, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, the first item on the on the on the agenda is the new minute. The minutes. Uh, anybody has any uh, comments on the minutes of the last month's board meeting? Uh, Louise. Louise has a comment. I move that we accept. I move that we accept the minutes of the February board meeting. Uh, yes, uh, I have. Uh, so I has a question about that. Um, uh, Holly had mentioned about that uh, coordination with um, Saint Anne's Church about the um, meals that we were going to take it over from Saint Anne's. Is it in collaboration with them, or are we doing it independently? 
All of that, if we did it, it would be in collaboration, but I did just speak with St. Anne's and um, it's kind of a ongoing plan to work with them just because there's certain things that we have to work out too. So she has restrictions on her end. So we're not ready. We're not there yet. Any other questions That's or comments? Uh, is someone going to make a motion to accept the minutes? Louise, did you want to did you want to make that? Oh, okay. Anybody second it? Who's going to second that minute? So I seconded it. Um, so I will now do a roll call vote. Louise, do you vote yes? Louise? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. Soya? Yes. Uh, Barbara? Yes. Mi minutes are accepted. Motion is passed. Moving on to the next item, which is the uh, financial reports. Christine, you're on. Good morning, everybody. Um, so we have three documents. We're going to start with the first is the fiscal year 21 budget summary as of 3 8 2021. Uh, so just going down the list here, uh, the formula grant currently has $36,285.33. The DOT grant has $14,833.43. The gift fund has $41,123.09. The revolving account has $21,868.76. And our general fund has $13,538.54. And as requested last month, Louise wanted to know how much in total we have paid out to Northeast IT. Uh, so as of 3-8, we had paid $7,048.90. I did want to point out that starting in November of 2020, we reduced our monthly fee with them to $40 from the original $295 because we're not really utilizing the service um, as there's no one in the senior center. So to date, that has saved us $1,020. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of the detailed? Louise? Louise has a question. Yes, naturally I do. Uh, talking about the Northeast, um, I, I see on this, um, we paid an annual fee in December. Then we paid a project fixed fee in January. And then in March, we had a hardware update. We haven't even used them. What are they updating? So I know we had touched upon this in the last meeting about the annual fee and the project fixed fee. So as a reminder, the annual fee is just something we pay for their service along with the monthly fee. The project fixed fee was for some updates yeah. that they performed to the computers. Um, this project final invoice, they never invoiced us for the installation of the computers. Um, that was an accounting error on their part. We had only been paying the $295 a month. So they they paid us for all of the or they charged us I apologize for all of the equipment the installation and everything to actually install the computers originally so that's the three thousand five hundred thirty eight dollars then um, a couple of weeks ago they had to come in they were having issues connecting to the master computer to perform remote updates so someone had to come in they updated um, something that helps connect to the Wi-Fi and we had to pay for this new equipment piece. So that was $134, including labor and the equipment piece. Is Trashy, Luis has another question. I just have yeah, a follow-up. Then is this update that's going to be on? It's an ongoing kind of cost then that they will constantly update and then. So the hardware update was a one-time thing. They physically installed something near the computers so that they can connect to them better. Uh, going forward, unless we have some other kind of issue that they're not able to fix remotely, we should only be paying the $40 a month until the senior center opens. And then when the center is open and the computers are back to being fully used, 
or not back to, they are being full use. Uh, it'll be the $295 starting then. So after that, then there would just be $295 a month. Yep, and then, but we would still have to pay the $65 annual fee again annual fee. Yes. in December. Yep. So everything is paid up now. They're all, we're up to date on everything that's been included. And in. that's what uh, I was concerned about. Uh, to my knowledge, we have paid everything, yes. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you very much, Christine. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I have a question for Holly, actually. Uh, these four computers, uh, maybe Christine knows the answer to this also. These four computers are connected to the town's network or is it separate, our own? I believe that they are connected to the town's network. See, what you just said is a little disturbing because it allows them remote access. And I think that we should check with John before we do that, if John knows that we're doing, they have given them this capability to remotely access. Because if it's connected to the town, then they've got all kinds of checks and balances in place to make sure that you cannot- Actually, let me, let, let me, let, you know what? Let me take back my statement. Um, there's just been so much happening with the computers lately. Uh, when I spoke with, um, his name escapes me. He took over John Covey's uh, position. I think it's Greg Ornato. Um, Actually, what they informed me was, no, it is our own because they did not want our work Wi-Fi being entangled with leisure Wi-Fi from the senior center. So forgive me, it took me a second to remember all the conversations going back but I believe that we are on our own Wi-Fi network. They, so anybody that joins in on those four computers in the lobby, um, the, there is one password to get in. They are, it is restricted. We did do some restrictions on there on what people can look up and things like that. Um, so no, you know what, I, I apologize. I, I, I misspoke. So it is on our own internet. Yeah, but what I'm concerned about is the remote access, that they have remote access to our computers. But so that means that our computers, from our computer, we should not be able to access data on the on the towns. No, they, no, no. They, they can't, Shashi. It's yeah. only to those four computers in the lobby that are on their own network. They don't have access to anything related to the town's operation. Right. One more question. When you say on our own network, you mean an ethernet, there are four individual ethernet lines going to each one of those computers or are they all on Wi-Fi? They're, they're, they're all... connected by Wi-Fi. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but they are separate from the town. Right. No, no, no. He says, this is a totally unrelated question. I, each, each computer has its own blue wire, not an antenna or connected to, town connected to Wi-Fi. Is that correct? I have to look at the back of them. I haven't studied the computers and they were right. set up okay. prior to me starting. All right, because that's what we were going to do at one time. We're going to have four separate wires. When, when Bob Cox was still facilities manager, is going to have separate. But then there's also Wi-Fi that we can use. It's available to anybody who want to, wants to come in with their own iPad or their own laptop. Like if I, I have brought in my laptop to meetings and use the, use the senior center's Wi-Fi. I understand what you're saying. I don't think that this is necessarily a concern. Everything is maintained and, and updated by Northeast with their own equipment. And it, I know that some things are hardwired. Like I said, I'm not at the senior center today. I'm in my home. I can't necessarily go look at the computers right now, but I, I don't think that this needs to be a concern. No, no, that's fine. So Shashi, what I would um, ask is that if you can put your your um, question into an email and I'd be happy to forward that to Northeast and have them respond because we're not, we're not the techie gurus or anything like that. And all of this was happening before we got here. So I'm still, we're still trying to learn like those pieces. So if you can put it in a like a word, like I said, a word email, I'd be happy to send them that off and I'll share the response with the rest of the board. Okay. 
That's mm -hmm. fine. Yep, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So are we done with the uh, Louise? Oh, uh, shifting over to the gift fund, uh, Christine. Um, I know last time, in fact, the last two months, I've talked about the amount of money that's been spent on all these projects that you're doing, which are wonderful. They're really, and they're reaching out to all the seniors, which we understand. And I had mentioned about putting together a report of just how much each project costs. Um, have you thought about that or, or looked into that? Uh, so I don't have that for this meeting, but I can certainly have it ready for the next board meeting in April. I think it might be helpful, like next Christmas, you know, when we're planning something, we can say, well, how much did it cost last year? Well, this is the amount of money we're going to need to raise in order to do the same thing, or if we want to supplement something else. Um, so I think, you know, that to have those figures handy, it gives us a starting point uh, for the next time we want to do a project. Thank you, Christine. Holly has a question. Yep, so I just wanna to respond to Louise. So the gifts of seniors that we did in December, you know, was purely because the senior center had been closed for so long that we weren't running any programs. And as you know, we have the money that was donated to us in our gift account. So I don't, I don't see the gifts for seniors the same thing for December 12th. As a matter of fact, we've been maybe talking about just doing a blanket drive or something a little bit of an easier, smaller scale uh, for seniors, just because I'm very hopeful that the senior center will at least be opened um, mm -hmm. at, at some sort of fraction to the public in which we won't have that space that we can just give away where we were doing it before. Um, but I do also want to keep in all the board members to keep in mind that with all the new grants that we have coming in, there's going to be a few more different uh, line items on how we're spending money, the nutrition grant and things like that that we'll talk about again in a little bit. But one of the things, because we're not open, is I work with my staff continuously about trying to come up with new things within the current status of the senior center. And um, just for instance, um, in this past week alone, I received another email regarding um, the farmer's market and um, the Shrewsbury Plant um, Gardening Club about wanting to use utilize the senior center. So I think there's going to be a lot of things that are gonna come up that are going to be different than what we're normally, or what you guys are normally used to seeing. So I just, um, we're, you know, it's hard because we're working behind the scenes and everything's working so fast, but we will definitely add all of those items in as, as they come in. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions, Louise? Uh -huh. Any questions? No, I, I well, we didn't spend much out of the gift fund this month. That's good. But I hate to see it depleted too much, you know, because it's a, it's an important fund that we have. And so, it's a necessary fund to, to have uh, something there to rely on. Sure. So if I may, um, so a lot of the monies that are in the gift fund were there before we got there. And I know that it's been very difficult for us to try to go back through paperwork to see where that money came from. And one of the things I wanted to ask the board is there, you know, there is still 40,000 some odd dollars in there. And one of the things that I would like to uh, talk about in the next meeting is where would we like to see that money go? Because instead of, instead of trying to keep making it rise, I, what I would like to see is utilize it um, to the best ability that we can for our Shrewsbury seniors. So, um, you know, I don't want to put that on a conversation right now, but I do feel as though that that's quite a lot of, of money that we could be utilizing, but where do we want to utilize it? And that's where I would seek the board's, you know, opinions to, for the rest of the council and aging staff to kind of look for opportunities to utilize that money, because I'm not exactly sure what if there's if there's something that we're waiting on um you know or 
the structure. I'm, I'm not sure, but that is an awful lot of money to be had in there when there are opportunities to that we that we as a staff know that we can utilize that money for Shrewsbury Senior. Louise? I think we had mentioned this before, Holly, that uh, we had um, divided the fund into four different categories. Um, that one was in memoriam, um, small home repair, uh, general don donation, and specified donation. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we're looking at the total, I think in some ways, because we think the funds, like an immemorial fund, um, we kind of felt that that should be done something to memorialize, not a specific person, but use it in, in that sense, in that feeling. Um, a small home repair, the money should probably be kept in there for people who need it. Uh, and that has come up too. So when you're looking at the total sum, it's really four different sections that come up to this one total. And there are different uh, ways of using it that we had looked at and we had talked about. Um, we didn't have anything in writing. Well, we had a few brief uh, outlines, but nothing finalized um, before you came here. So that uh, I just want you to, when you're looking at it, don't look at it as 40,000, look at it as 10,000 in each different situation kind of thing and how it's to be used. Holly? Yep, so um, if that is the case, then what I would ask at this board meeting is for the, um, the board to agree on that we divide outside of what we have put aside for, you know, feed a senior and everything that we've already created. So outside of all of those things, what I would ask is that the board agree on splitting it up um, in those four categories, 25%, 25%, 25%. So therefore, so the reason being is we still have a very active home repair. So I, if, a, if a home repair comes through that we need to utilize funds or to assist a senior in funds, I'd like the board's permission um, that, or, or wording that we, that we have the right to go ahead um, and assist in those funds. So is that something that could be done right now? Louise? I think that uh, when we talked about this before, we never got to the point of writing out definitions for each one. I think to vote now, I think maybe is premature in how we wanted to use the money. Um, possibly something set out for the next board meeting and people can think about it and, and, and discuss it among themselves or think about how to use it, I think would be better than to vote right now on it. Uh, I have a question for you, Holly. The four categories that Louise just talked about, what is it you want the board to vote on? So if we were going to split whatever is in our gift account to go through in memoriam, small home repair, general donations or specific donations is to vote on the fact that whatever is in there in the existing account right now as it is, because we don't have any background information on what the, um, how it was deposited is to split what's existing right there into those four different categories. So it would generally be, and it, you know, $10,000 in change for each four, each four groups. And then going forward, as Christine has done, specifically putting how much money is for each, whenever we get a donation, following up with that donation and, and so forth. Barbara? Um, way back when we talked about this, way, way back, um, we were going to figure out what money came in for the, for each of those four categories. I think it's probably too late to even do that. I know going forward, we could, we could, um, write down 
who donated money for specific or general. But um, um, how does anybody feel about just breaking it into the you know four parts and then going forward, um, adding it to those four categories? Yeah, I think Holly, if you could write us an email to the board, all members, and 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 try to articulate somehow your your proposal, that would be helpful for us to make a decision to understand the scope of it. For instance, uh, home repair. First of all, we we think that 2020, no, 25, 25 for each category is the appropriate, but perhaps it isn't. Perhaps we ought to think more in terms of seniors needs i mean do, do they need most memorials are fine but home repair probably needs a whole lot more than the 25 percent so we got to think in terms of need holly go ahead yep so um i think a lot of it depends on so you know you, if you have a general donation I, so Louise mentioned a general donation, a specific donation. So unfortunately, we don't know what that was prior to us coming into, into the town. So we could either put more in one um, and going forward, um, you know, we're, you'll see in the next newsletter that I did um, specific donation, like if people wanted to donate, it's going to go to whatever services we're offering, whether it's nutrition, transportation, um, you know, activity programming and things like that. So I will definitely, I would be happy to write something up uh, and work with Christine and Elizabeth to figure out the, the correct wording to divide these two four categories up. And then going forward, that's how we'll deposit them into those four categories um, with a line item description, just so we know where it came from. Um, I think Louise, that I think that's what you wanted originally too. Is like, where did it come from? What specifically did they did they mention in their deposit? So we'll have this for the April agenda for sure. Just, just not to digress a little bit. Uh, this is Norma. I have a question. I have a question. Uh, 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 Bar uh, Norma, just one minute. One minute. Uh, in the past, I remember Walter Rice. Uh, taking care of small home repair through outreach. Is, is that what you're planning to do now also? I mean, through outreach? So, yes, so that is through outreach. And that is something that Elizabeth is going to touch on a little bit with the grant that we're trying to apply for. Okay. Um, I'd like to just table that for just a little bit. Okay. All right. Uh, Norma, you had something to say? Yes, I have a question. Um, uh, spending over a certain amount um, from the gift account, does that have to be approved by the council or is there any amount that has been stated? Anybody got any thoughts on putting limits? Uh, Holly, go ahead. Um, according to Kristen and Kevin, that if something arises where um, I feel that the money needs to be spent, I can go ahead and do that. Um, but with work, working with the board, I would certainly notify and welcome any feedback before I went ahead and did any large um, withdrawal from any of the accounts. Yes, the, the way it's worked in the past, I think it was left to the discretion <coughs> of the director depending to decide whether this is an emergency or not. Like somebody lost a, uh, had to be evacuated from a house due to a fire. And I think the Sharon merely authorized, the, you know, a hotel room for them for the night, for the people who were displaced by the fire. And I don't think you need to see the board's approval to do that. Uh, does that answer your question, Barbara? I mean, uh, Norma? Norma, are you there? I, I, guess, I guess so. I just didn't know if there was any um, top amount, you know, I don't for think certain that things. That has been spelled out yet. Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments before we move on? 
next item on our agenda. By the way, is that anybody have any questions on what we've been just talking about? Anybody before we move on? No one have. Uh, the next, we're, we're moving on to the director's report. Uh, Holly, your, your, uh, go ahead, Christine. So um, we didn't go over the fiscal year 22 budget document that I had submitted. Sorry about that. So Mr. there's a lot of information on there. I don't necessarily want to go line by line, um, but I, you guys had time to review it. If anybody has any questions, we can certainly discuss it. Yes, I forgot completely about that. Thank you. The, the question uh, I would have is actually for Holly, is this the budget you are, you're, pl you're planning to present to the Finance Committee? This is, that is exactly, yes, that is exactly the budget that I have already uh, forwarded to the Finance Committee, yes. And have you had any feedback from them yet? Or do you expect from the finance, it? From the Finance Committee? Yes. No. Or from the town manager? Uh, I've worked closely with the revolving account. The revolving account has been approved by the town manager. Um, this year, everything was completely different this year. I just want to let everybody know that, that typically uh, in years past, what I've learned is that all of the accounts have been submitted into the town manager's office with how the money is going to be spent. This year, they were only really focusing, I shouldn't say only, but really focusing on the general, the general fund, the general account. So we were not required to submit anything for the other accounts. However, um, with Christine's OCD of making sure that it's all in there, she had already put together all of the other accounts. Um, and what she did was she went through the back two years of any expenses that were accrued through all of those accounts and she put those in. And then specifically, again, through the last year, through COVID, because we're expecting um, not to spend so many funds as we have in the past. So I think if you, if you look at each page um, with the revolving account, the formula grant um, and so forth, that um, you know, it still leaves money at the very end uh, for us to carry over into 2023. Um, and keep, please keep in mind on the formula grant that we no longer have to spend that down to the zero dollars and we can transfer that over to the following year. So the one thing that is fantastic about that is if something happens to the general fund um, and we still have money left over uh, in the formula grant, we can carry that over and there's no penalty. I have, I have a question for Holly. Are any of our goals identified in the strategic plan tied to the budget, identified in the budget? Um, I would say, I mean, I, ha I didn't look at it specifically through the strategic plan, but I would say that the things that we've already accomplished are definitely um, built into our fiscal year 22 budget. Now, keeping in mind, please, that um, normally in the past, um, we had a very active or an active friends group. Um, and many of our programs that were running prior to COVID were able to be expensed out through the friends, but that isn't necessarily happening right now. Um, so there are there are going to be some changes that you're going to see from last year or for, for this year and into 22. Um, because if we're not, depending upon the status of the, the senior center on how we're reopening, um, I think that's how we built the revolving um, account to, to um, you know, for the, for the expenses of the revolving account. I, I am fully expecting that the next fiscal year, we're still going to be under some major restrictions. And therefore I don't see the extensive um, expenses that, that had happened previous. At least not until 2023. That's that's my projection. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Christine, is there anything else left in your uh, in your department? It looks like Louise has a question. Uh, Louise had a question. Yeah. Go ahead, Louise. Yeah. Yes, I I was looking at the report that Kevin set out and uh, under his uh, under his name, uh, and it's the operating budget by department. Um, the first column it says FY twenty two. FP1, do you know what that means? Holly, Christine, uh, do you know what that means? I'm, I'm looking. Because that is 3,000 more than the request from the department. So I don't remember exactly what FP stands for, and I know Holly's looking for it, but um, the town had kind of projected what they thought our budget would be. And then we manipulated the numbers based off of past experience. So our totals did come out to be less than what they had originally projected we would need. And that's what I, that's what I had read. That's the way I read it was that they were offering more money, which I thought was a very good sign. But I don't know if that's in fact, because it's like 3,000 more than what the request was. And it's like 14,000 more than last year's budget was. Um, so I think, you know, and, and um, I'm hoping that that's the way we're reading it correctly. I don't know. Excuse I am me. not. Yeah, I'm not sure. Who just joined? Oh, Ginny. Okay. Leonard. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm not sure what the FP stands for. A might fiscal projection, perhaps. So, where do we? How is that affecting us? Is it worth investigating further or investing any more time in this? I, I don't believe so. I believe that um, the, the town gave us the money that we originally budgeted for. We didn't actually have any um, department cuts. Uh, we, were, we got lucky on that. Uh, so I don't feel that it's worth uh, investigating. As you can see through the rest of the FY22 budget sheets that we have or Christine put together quite nicely how the monies uh, will be spent down. And with all of them, there still appears that there will be a rollover fund into the 2023. Um, and please keep in mind, um, and I don't wanna jump the gun too much before we, we have time, but um, please keep in mind that already for this year, we've been awarded nine, just short of $90,000 um, in grants. So that is going to help the Council on Aging slash Senior Center uh, tremendously. Now, two questions actually. The money that's locked in the revolving account that gets carried over to next year, that will figure in our budget for next year, right? It has to no. be. Nope, the, any money that's left over in the revolving accounts goes back to the general fund. So what gets not, not in the revolving fund. The revolving fund is ours. Oh, that's right. Yes, I'm the sorry. The general fund goes back to the town. General fund. But everything yes, else sorry. does roll over to the next year. Yes. I'm sorry, I missed that discussion. Christine. So the, the revolving fund, gift fund, for, and formula grant now, um, and the Mass DOT will roll over to next year if there's still a balance. Those are our accounts that um, that money is ours. It's the general fund, whatever's left over at the end of the year that we don't use goes back to the town and gets redispersed for the next year. This is getting a little complicated for me because it looks like when we do our next year's budget, this is going to somehow set us back. I don't know if it will or not, maybe not. I, I don't think so. Um, I think part of what that in not inflated, but the, the higher adjustment for what the town thought we would need. Um, honestly, I think it had a lot to do with the newsletter. Um, Holly has drastically cut the amount of money that we spend on printing and distributing the newsletter. Um, so that was a big chunk of money. Normally, I think we had spent $14,000. 
now we only anticipate having to spend $2,000. Um, so there, there was a lot of money that we, we kind of got to move around and play with, and that's how we ended up with a different total than what the town had our originally projected we would need. Um, so I don't necessarily think that we'll lose anything. Um, I think we've just been been smarter with how we, we pay certain bills. Okay. Luis. I just had a quick question about the, um, the position. Uh, it's the year 23 to 26. So next year, you don't expect to do any changes in the position, yes. council on aging, the senior center. Um, if I might, Shashi, uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're not at that agenda item yet, but I'm happy to discuss that as soon as we are. She, Louise was speaking of Okay, this. good. Thank you. I'm sorry, Louise is speaking Pardon? of what? She was she was speaking of the vision plan and staffing positions and we're oh, not okay. there. We're not okay. okay, Shirley, thank you. Okay, this is Norma, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, um, because I don't have, uh, this uh, budget is what's gonna be submitted to the finance committee, right? Now, what I don't have in front of me is last year's budget. What I want to know that was approved and everything. What I don't know is, are these totals the same as, more of, or less, or anything compared to last year's budget that was approved um, by the Finance Committee? Holly, go ahead. So we did not include those um, on for this agenda. We have included those in the past of, um, and those were the ones that were created by uh, interim director at the time, David Snowden, before my arrival. But everybody should have those in their past notes. Um, one of the things to keep in mind when you, uh, if you are able to retrieve them is that, um, the money that was spent or that was uh, allotted for the outreach position to increase was actually allotted at the current rate of what Walter Rice was being paid and not at the current rate of what a new uh, outreach coordinator would be. And we did receive that extra money in this year's uh, general um, account. So we don't, I don't have those papers for you today, but they should, you should have plenty of them um, from, from the past year because we've discussed it many times. Does that answer your question, Norma? Uh, yeah, so th that's the only difference then, the, the outreach. That is primarily the only difference, yes. Oh, all right, that was my question, thank you. Sure. Luis, any questions? No. Okay. Now we can move on, right? Unless I yeah. miss something else. Let me look at your agenda here. All right. Um, the next item I have is the director's report. Do you want to get started on that? Uh, I do not. What the next item I have is, um, oh, actually, that is it. But uh, it is the director's report. But um, Elizabeth yeah, is, find the stuff. Yeah, Elizabeth is to, um, she's right. the first to speak. Good morning, everyone. So I'll try to keep this as brief as I can. Um, so the main updates on an outreach side, our main priority continues to be our COVID outreach. We're trying really diligently every day day in and day out to really get these appointments booked. And we've we've been struggling a little bit just with the website. Um, it's not as accessible as it used to be. So we're trying. Um, in addition to that, we're also continuing our weekly, weekly outreach program, including our wellness calls, our volunteer wellness calls, birthday calls, the pen pal program, and our small home repairs. Um, we actually just got a resident who needed that program yesterday. So Steve has taken that on, which is fantastic. Um, 
in addition, I know Holly touched upon this a little bit, and I know it's the next item on the agenda, but I will speak briefly on the Shared Winter Streets Grant and the AARP grant. Um, so we found out that we were awarded the full $45,000 for the Shared Winter Streets Grant, which is um, really exciting. That grant is going to help us install benches throughout town, as well as on the nine school properties in town, which is really exciting. Um, we're also going to be able to purchase walking vests for seniors to encourage more um, safe and active outdoor activity, as well as um, be able to implement the senior salt program, which will ideally be established, you know, at the start of next summer, or excuse me, next winter. Um, and that will allow us to give seniors, um, you know, buckets of salt for their own home use to keep their outdoor at home safe. So we're really excited about that. Um, and then, and the deadline for that implementation is actually May 31st. So we're going to work really closely with Christine on budgeting and purchasing and invoices, as well as with um, the building inspector, public, sort, public works, and the town engineers to locate the different sites on the campuses and throughout town that we'll be able to install those benches. Um, and then additionally, the AARP grant is the Community Challenges Grant. That is actually due April 15th, but we've had a really great head start on that. Um, that grant, we're really aiming to implement um, an intergenerational focus with, in two ways. We're gonna do um, a Yahoo program, which I know I touched upon last month, but just to reiterate, um, Yahoo stands for Young Adults Helping Out Others. It is actually a program that originated in Sterling, and we, Holly, Christine, and I have met um, a few times with the people over there who have kind of originated it and who are still maintaining the program, which has been really great. They've been extremely helpful in helping us kind of pinpoint the areas in which we need to add into our budget um, and adjust in that way, which has been fantastic. We're um, really hoping to kind of further that collaboration and hopefully bring it to a more regional scale. So in addition to that piece of it, Yahoo will kind of be an umbrella term for a couple student-led programs. Um, we're hoping to have a fall and spring cleanup opportunity to engage our students and our residents, and we'll coordinate with the DPW on that. Um, and then we also want to implement a student shovel program, again, that would start um, for next winter, which would be really exciting. On the other half of this Community Challenges Grant, we also want to put a little bit more focus on the small home repair, which we've talked about in this meeting already, um, it's been ongoing. That has, you know, been a program that we've been able to offer throughout the pandemic, obviously on a smaller scale, but we feel like this would be a really great grant opportunity to really put some funding behind it in case of, you know, emergency fuel assistance, in case of emergency, um, you know, cooling or heating systems failing or maintenance and whatnot. So we really want to make sure that we have some funding provided for that too. Um, because the small home repair also puts an intergenerational focus on it. It might not be necessarily students or kids who are working in the home to help fix repairs, but there are, you know, adults of all ages and all generations that are willing to help and reach out to our seniors. So that's kind of the intergenerational focus twist that we're going to put on that as well. So um, again, that's due April 15th. We've already got a really great head start on it. So we're hoping to submit it, you know, the first week of April and just have it be be done. So really excited about that. Uh, Barbara has a question. Uh, ahead, yeah, mainly, <clears throat> excuse me, mainly from my notes. Um, yes. um, the other programs I understood, the shared winter streets, I understood the community challenges grant yep. ARP that is connected to Yahoo. Yep, so that grant, we're actually gonna apply for a Yahoo program, which is gonna house, you know, the student intergenerational focused programs, um, such as, you know, the cleanups and the student shovel. And then we're also under that same grant gonna also put in the small homes repair program. Oh, um, that answers my question. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. No uh, Elizabeth, I'm part of the DEI uh, uh, group and I'm one of the seniors there. And I was totally surprised at how little the people in the group know about the senior center, oh. about all the facilities and the programs that we offer. I, I was totally shocked. We need to project ourselves out a little bit, not a little bit, a lot more 
to so that the people know what we are doing what are the ways that we can do that that's actually that oh holly, holly if yeah. i might one of the things that i mentioned at the last meeting uh last month was the fact that um you can look at COVID in two different ways a blessing and a curse you know a curse for obvious reason but a blessing because through all of the code red messages that have gone out through town management um and and elsewhere that we have now over i would say 800 names of people that prior to this had never reached out to us those so those will be used as an opportunity to reach out to them going forward whether it's um as a matter of fact uh, for April's newsletter, we're planning on uh, mailing out everybody that already receives a, a newsletter and everybody that's on the COVID um, inquiries that we've received. Uh, and keeping in mind that on the back of those newsletters, it says if you want to continue, you know, receiving these newsletters, you know, you need to call in. So this won't, that won't be a mass mailing for every month. Um, but I feel as though through the unfortunate circumstance that we've been in the last year, people are noticing us more than they had before. Um, so Elizabeth, I don't know if you have anything else you wanna to add to that. No, I think that's great. Um, I was gonna add a little bit more, uh, like a specific thing is that one piece of our um, budgeting in this AARP grant, a big, not, a, not one piece, but a large piece of it is actually for marketing purposes. Um, you know, whether it's getting banners to hang throughout or throughout the town, having yard signs, um, all of the, we're going to, I mean, if awarded the grant, we really want to get um, bold. We want to copy Sterling or continue Sterling in the sense of getting really bold colored shirts with very, you know, bold lettering so they can see that this is, you know, the Shrewsbury Senior Center sponsored by AARP and whatnot. And we're here, we're doing these programs. Um, so we, we really do want to focus a little bit more on the marketing side of things too in these upcoming opportunities. Uh, Louise, just one minute. I, I was watching your program that you on, on public access channel, the one that the two of you did. My only comment is I don't think maybe you should do it over without masks this time because we don't need to wear masks anymore when you are with people. I think uh, CDC. Maybe you can you can do that because people can like to see your face. Go ahead. I'm not sure. What are you talking about that we did? You did a the two of you did a show yesterday. I mean, I saw it yesterday. You're talking about you were interviewing Elizabeth regarding outreach. Oh, the video that we did in December. Oh, probably done in December. Oh. But okay. yes, your so past, it's very hard to figure out what who you are. <laughs> So if I might, um, there is a correction on what you just said, Shashi. So even if people are vaccinated, um, the CDC is still recommending using face masks if you're in a room um, or a, a six feet or not exactly six feet. So I agree that I would love to redo that, that whole thing that we did um, when it becomes safe, but there is no... Uh, we don't have the recommendation from town management or the Worcester Public Health Department or the CDC yet to come into those close comforts, especially where we're traveling around the office area like that um, without face masks. And please keep uh, this in mind that not everybody is agreeing to be vaccinated. So we still have to be very active, proactive about um, keeping those safe measures. <laughs> I was going to suggest that that might be the forum to put up a chart and explain, go over the services that are available. Mm -hmm. Louise. I had a follow-up, Elizabeth. Um, my daughter just recently moved back into Shrewsbury and I was talking about the senior center and, and she's over 60 and she said she doesn't know anything about it, only what I tell her. And she said, are you reaching out to people who move in who are over 60 and let them know about the senior center and what's going on? And I said, I don't think we have a program like that. And it might be a good idea uh, to introduce to the senior center. Holly? 
Yep, so I think one of those things is making sure that when people move into town, they update their census through the town. Um, so we are notified when people come in. I think that, you know, the way we are working and trying to reach out to people, we're doing the very best we can, but we also need to, for people that move into town to be proactive on their own side to, you know, go onto the town's website and to see what, um, you know, what departments they're interested in and things like that and make sure that they sign up. So I think, Louise, as you just mentioned, this is your daughter. So this is a good time to use word of mouth um, and get the information that we do out to people so they understand because we have no way of knowing who is moving in and who is not moving in or anything like that. So it is up to, it is up to the public to also be proactive um, to look for the information that, that, that they need. Um, because if, if she's, if she, so you mentioned that she's over six, 60 or over, um, but if she had young children, those people I know from past experience working in other towns, they look through parks and recreation, the things that like if they have children. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's a, it's a big circle, but I think word of mouth is one of the biggest ones. So I'm glad that you had that conversation with your daughter. So at least she knows that she can come and, you know, look at the services that we offer and then reach out if she has any additional questions. Louise. I just think it might be so good, another another outlet for us to look into to see and to and to you know because I know there has to be a town record of all the people that move into town and uh, there may be an, a list or something I don't know but just an idea. Anybody else? Well, I have another question concerning the newsletter. I mean, it, it's great to have a notice on the back of the newsletter saying if you want it mailed out to call the senior center and um, put your name on the list. But if the people aren't getting the newsletter to begin with, well, then they don't know that they should be calling in to get it. Is there some way that we could put some kind of notification on other media to alert people if they want to get the newsletter mailed? um that they should call in christine had a question just responding to norma um I, we can certainly put it, an advertisement on the public access channel about our newsletter but we are um our, our our wonderful wonderful can't say enough good things about her volunteer carmela does deliver hundreds of copies of the newsletter around town to different areas grocery stores, um, convenience stores, banks, anywhere that'll let us leave a stack or two. Um, she, she goes around town, she spends a couple hours of her time to do that, and we really appreciate her efforts. Um, so that we do put them out there on the back of the newsletter is a little, and I mean, I know all of you get it, I put you on the newsletter list myself. Um, there's a little square that says, if you'd like to continue receiving it, either call the senior center or mail us this little piece of paper, and we'll add you to the list. Um, Elizabeth has been helping me along with the other COA staff members to add people to the list each month. Um, and every once in a while, we don't do it every single month, but um, it's getting more frequent. Um, we, I can pull a list from based off of the calls that we receive at the senior center. And we send out kind of introductory newsletters to people to say, hey, this is something that we mail out. It's free for Shrewsbury Senior Centers. If you want to continue to get this mailed to you, give us a call. We have your information, obviously. We'll just add you to our list. Um, so I think, unfortunately, February was the last month that we did that, and we did have some issues getting it out. I think everybody got them at the end of February, which is better late than never. But um, we, we sent out over 600 newsletters, and our typical mailing list of people who have actually requested it is only about 350. Um, so we sent out almost double our normal amount trying to get more people to to join our mailing list and to want to receive it. We don't want to spam anybody and, and send out the newsletter if they don't receive it or if they don't want to receive it. Um, and we also have it available on our website. Um, so I do have some people that don't necessarily want the paper copy. But if I don't post it on the first of the month, I get a call saying, hey, why isn't the newsletter on the website yet? Um, so, so I know that people are accessing it digitally as well. 
So I don't know exactly how many people that are, that is. I don't get to see a, a view count, um, but they're they're out there, and we have some computer savvy seniors, which is always nice to see. Can I make a request, please? Um, I think this is something that truly bothers me, especially because I'm out in the world and working with people, et cetera. I, I, it gets kind of frustrating to hear us say things like computer savvy seniors, like they're a bunch of morons or individuals who um, just can't possibly figure out how to use a phone. And I think that if we, we keep talking about how to not put people in boxes, and so I think that it's, I would rather hear someone say there are some people that prefer to get a printed copy because, you know, some people like paper. I mean, I'm in healthcare and theoretically we were supposed to be able to not have paper anymore. And we probably have more paper now than I've ever seen in my life. Um, and there's some people that prefer digital. I mean, I don't get newspapers anymore. I read everything on, I do everything digitally. So I think that um, I, I personally find it insulting. I don't know how anyone else feels, but I think that everyone's going to reach that age. So just think about how the perception is. Of, are we all feeble-minded once you hit, hit 50? I mean, I, I just, it's a bothersome thing to me. So I think we should keep that in mind when we're talking and how we're presenting ourselves when we're talking to people. Holly? That is noted. Thank you. Uh, it's been my experience that there's a wide range of people when you call, talk about seniors, some who are very technically savvy and some who can't manipulate a cell phone. I've come across all of them at some point. Anyway, I don't think we need to belabor the point. Oh, we no, need I to know be, people younger than that that don't really like to use computers. And then you have other people who, you know, they can't live without Siri, which is sad, but you know, that's our lives. Okay. I just, so, but thanks. Um, are we gonna move on from here or does anybody have any other questions? Um, Elizabeth, you, are you done? You gonna move on to the grant? Yeah, if no one has any other questions, that, that was it, thank you. Uh, uh, Holly, I have a question regarding the small home repair. I'm a little nervous about, I'm always nervous about things like this. When you send somebody into somebody's home to fix something, somebody falling down, somebody getting hurt, somebody not doing the repair correctly, what are the legal ramifications of this and how are we protect it? How are volunteers protected? Because the people who do the small home repair are volunteers. So I believe, so this home repair was created well before my arrival to uh, Shrewsbury. And when I came upon, I did reach out to Kristen Loss and this is um, under the liability insurance of the town of Shrewsbury. So um, there are certain things that they are, that they can't do. Um, and then there are certain things that they can do. So as soon as you start, um, utilizing uh, small small motor equipment, you know, screwdriver and things like that, then, then it becomes something else. So um, again, this was something that was created before me. If you would like, I can ask Kristen Last to join us next month and we can ask her individually or I can ask her um, if she could let us know what exactly everybody, uh, what those small repair um, volunteers are able to do. I'll, I'm happy to get you that information. You know, if you can gather some information, I don't think it's necessary to have Kristen at the meeting and have a separate big discussion about it. Just got to make sure that our volunteers are protected. That's all. Because a home repair can be somebody might call because their heater is not working or your stove is not working. Or if it's just a question of putting back a towel rack or something like that, that can easily, you know, that's a whole spectrum of possibilities there that I'm concerned about. That sure. Area want to get into stuff that they should not be doing. Anything to do with electricity, I mean, high voltage or anything to do with microwaves and things like that, that you can't be very careful. Sure, um, I would like to request, I would, like, I would like to request that Elizabeth, could you please reach out to both Kevin and Kristen and CC myself on there to ask about the liability for our small home repair, please. Okay, that's good enough. 
Go ahead, Elizabeth. I think we are on to the next item, which is also yours. So I talked about my the two grants that I've worked the on, grant. which are the shared winter streets and the AARP grant. So if, if there are no more questions on that, um, that that was pretty much it. Okay. Holly. Yep. So uh, we did um, get awarded the taxi livery and Hackney uh, grant for forty thousand dollars. We have not yet received the award uh, yet, so we haven't been able to promote. Um, the opportunity for people to utilize the um, that grant outside of what we're already offering yet. So we're waiting on that award. We've, that's what we've been told to do. Uh, but our plan is I will work with Cynthia to devise a um, an advertisement, if you will, or some kind of flyer that will be shared in, I was hoping to put it in our April newsletter, but we're, my due date is for tomorrow. Um, to have that put in, uh, but if 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 it falls short of April, it will go onto the cable uh, access channel as well as the social media networks. Um, that anybody, um, actually, no, I, sorry, I'm confusing too. The Shrewsbury seniors will be allowed to call the senior center and uh, request a ride outside of our regular Shrewsbury hours. Um, they can call during hours, but they can request a ride outside of Shrewsbury hours uh, to include nights and weekends. And those rides will either go to Yellow Cab or through the Safeway Luxury Transit. Um, and they are ADA, they can take on wheelchairs. Um, so again, so we're not announcing it, um, you know, putting it out anywhere that until we actually receive the awards and they are going to divide the awards uh what they just recently told us into two halves so we're going to get twenty thousand for the first couple months and then they'll give us the other twenty thousand um at, a, at at another time but again i have i don't have all of that information uh specific information they're working on that now because they were wanted to make sure that all of the towns that did receive the award um, still wants the award without any revisions. So it's just taking a little bit longer than we had hoped. But one of the other things that we're hoping is that we will be able to send people out um, to get vaccinated. Um, one of the things that I talked to Cynthia, and I don't know um, how many of you here have been vaccinated yet, but it you know you, you go in, you get your appointment, and it could take a couple of minutes before you get it, but I'll tell you everywhere that I've gone has been pretty swift. Um, but then there is a 15 minute um, observation time that you have to take. So Cynthia and I sat down and decided that if, if and when we send out appointments for seniors to take the yellow cab or Safeway, um, that we're going to do it within an hour allotment just in case there is any, you know, waiting time. So so there, it may mean that a senior has to wait for up to a half an hour for their ride to come, but at the at, but they will get their ride. Um, what we're trying to avoid is them missing their appointment or being worried um, and, then re, and then having to reschedule of those rides, especially if they were on a Saturday because uh, we don't we don't work on Saturdays. So, um, those are all, you know, the logistics that we're trying to work out with the tax delivery grant. Does anybody have any questions on that particular grant? Well, I have a question regarding transportation in general. Uh, in the past, we used to, if somebody could not fit on a, on, a, on a bus, we offered them a yellow cab. Was that a different budget? I mean, how does that all tie in together? Nope. So um, we're still offering yellow cab even in um, our day to day routines now, because sometimes uh, it just doesn't fit into our routine or we would have to pay even extra to have one of our van drivers work. So we're still utilizing yellow cab uh, wherever we need to. Uh, we just do, we're just not in the, uh, the, the position to do it more often than not because that money does come out of our, either our revolving account or our DOT account. So we're really looking forward to having this new uh, grant awarded to us so we won't have to worry about that. And that money does have to be spent down by December 31st, 2021. It does or it doesn't? It, it does. does. 
Okay. Uh, the next grant is uh, through MCOA. They uh, were doing um, a community grant. And so I had applied for both isolation and nutrition. We were awarded uh, the nutrition part of the grant, which was just under $5,000. And um, as you can see by the table that I emailed out, that one of the things that I uh, put on there was to purchase microwave ovens, um, specifically for the seniors that are living at home um, that uh, might not have that easy way to heat up a, the, a dinner, especially if they're coming frozen to them, either from the senior center or ESWA. And I did get that information working with our nutrition manager, Beth. Um, and, you know, she explained some concern of how people were heating up the meals that they were getting at home, knowing that they didn't have microwaves. So I, so now that we've been awarded um, or congratulated on that money that we'll be receiving, the next process is for me to sit down uh, with both Christine and Elizabeth and, the, and uh, Pat and Donna um, about how we want to distribute the ability for people to be eligible to receive a microwave. Um, so my thought is I may follow the same um, approach that we do for our tax, our senior tax workout program that you, you know, this certain amount of money of what you make, um, but we don't have that written in stone yet. Um, so, and we just found that out on Friday. So I haven't had an opportunity to sit down with anybody. Um, but that is part of the money. The other part of the funds will go to uh, simply having the materials to bag um, the things from the food pantry that we presently have. Um, we find ourselves often scurrying or asking uh, you know, the nutrition manager if she has any extra bags to help out any seniors that may call us uh, requesting food. Um, as well as we would like to replenish the, the, the first um, amount of frozen foods that we had ordered um, a few months ago uh, to get us through the next six months. Uh, so those are where those funds are um, allocated for. Oh, as well as a, a refrigerator, because what we did discover is that we love our freezer, but sometimes we have an opportunity to collect food from ESWA in Worcester um that needs the things need to be cooled and we obviously don't have that cooling system uh inside that storage room so having just a refrigerator on you know a low setting would um would really help us out so i think when especially when the friends group comes back they'll see that the storage room has changed they still have their spot um but it is much cleaner we have uh, thrown away a lot of things uh, we have some things in uh, that we're uh, just purchasing now to eliminate uh, uh, any rodents or anything like that. We're using the, um, the plug-in mouse, um, um, whatever, the electrolyte, or not electrolyte, but electric, whatever that they send off, um, as well as that the staff is... Um, Many of the staff have just become certified in the Serve Safe program, uh, myself included. So I just felt it necessary since we never know what staff is going to be there that takes the call from the senior that calls in requesting food, that it would just be nice that, um, you know, 75% of the staff be certified in knowing how to handle those and making sure that they're under the right refrigeration um, and things like that. Any questions on that? So it has a question. Uh, Holly, I wanted to know what is the number of people or seniors calling in for food? Um, so it varies week to week, depending on, um, and honestly, a lot depends on if it's uh, a grab and go meal, what the menu item is, but we do have some regulars through our outreach program. Um, so I, I would say anywhere between one and five. So they don't always call, but they are, there are some that do. Um, but when somebody does call, we usually give them at least three days worth of food. Um, and three days is three meals. So um, it's not just one meal for three days. It's three meals for three days. And with everybody that calls us, we always give them material on how they can connect to either Meals on Wheels or Heart to Home or other opportunities to uh, purchase. 
what we found is already um, already made meals is the 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 thing that the seniors like the most because they might not have the opportunities at home to mix other ingredients. So they do like our frozen meals the best. So this is uh, over and above the grab and go. This is over and above. So yes. So as I mentioned last month, I haven't had the opportunity yet to do the policies and guidelines for the fire department and the police department to utilize those things. Um, for emergencies, not that they can't. So they would have to call me first and I would work with them to get those. But right now, the food pantry, the food sharing pantry is basically supplemental. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Luis has a question. Um, how is this publicized, Holly? And besides in the newsletter, is it, how do people who are not taking part in this, how do they become knowledgeable about what is available to them and how to go about doing it? Sure. So the newsletter, so it is on the newsletter and the newsletter does go through social media as well as I've been working with um, the St. Anne's volunteers and they do let the volunteers know when they drive through. Um, I believe Shrewsbury is on Mondays afternoons. Uh, she does let them know that if they need other supplemental food, um, that they can, uh, as long as they're seniors, they can contact the 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 uh, senior center. Um, we have put it out on some broadcasts uh, on cable and things like that. Uh, we have also explained. I have also explained this to uh, the community advocate. Um, so it, it does get out there, and it's on our website. I'm go ahead, Louise. Yeah. I'm just concerned that we're missing some people. And I know, you know, that those that, that don't use the computer, don't have the computer, those that are isolated at home, those are the ones I'm concerned about that are not, they don't get the newsletter. I haven't been all these places where you put the newsletter, I haven't been to any of those in a year. I have been at home, um, but I have other people help me, but some people don't have that. Those are the ones that I'm really concerned about that we are, I think there's a population there that we're missing and I don't know how to reach them. Louis, uh, Holly? Well, I think that's an ongoing issue that every, every town has is how yes. to reach all of those people. And I think one of the things that Shrewsbury is lucky to have is that we have our own cable company that I think that those advertisements get run periodically. Um, so hopefully if people are watching their, uh, their television, if they have a television that they are doing that, um, one of the things that we are doing is we're also utilizing, you know, the, the, all of the other departments that reach out to different people that we don't have. So many times they'll share our information. Um, each month, so we're not allowed to know um, the 180 plus people that are on Meals on Wheels, but so each month at the very beginning of the month, we give them a stack of newsletters to make sure that those go out to people that are home. So the people that are receiving the Meals on Wheels understand that we love the fact that they've already taken that opportunity to apply and get those meals because that's our first initiative. But then if they need more, again, supplemental food in between, we will deliver those right to them if, if they need delivery. Or many times we have people, um, once they tell us that, yep, we're already on Meals of Wheels and we're like, okay, well, we're, you know what, we're gonna give you another three days. So what we trust, we don't, we try not to do a whole week's worth because we just wanna make sure that we monitor um, the food that we have inside in case of emergency or anything like that. But we do have ongoing people that call us each week that says, I'm ready for some more and we have no problem with that. And we make sure that we input that into all of our data. And like I said, I think reaching out to those people that are at home, um, I, mean, I think that's always going to be an ongoing issue that we're always going to have to try to think outside the box on how we're going to reach them all. I'm hoping that I can work with um, and to get some uh, things put into the next tax uh, session when that goes out to just say, you know, call the senior center if you're looking for X, Y, and Z, and hopefully we'll get some phone calls on that. So, yeah. 
Holly, where is this food coming from? And are you going to have a constant supply from these people? So the, right now the food is coming from, so we have ordered some from Heart to Home Meals. Those are our frozen uh, uh, meals that are in our freezer. And any of the food that we have received have come from donations from St. Anne's Food Pantry. And we're lucky enough that our food manager, actually, um, that our nutrition manager, she lives in, in Shrewsbury, and she also uh, works very closely uh, with the St. Anne's Food Pantry. So she very many times will bring stuff back to us. Um, and she's also served Safe Soda certified. So we're constantly looking at, um, you know, the donations that come in. Uh, two months ago, I believe we had a meeting and um, there was some concern about taking some donations from outside sources. So uh, I've worked with my staff and we have decided not to um, just take a community member's donation. Um, we did it last month have an opportunity where someone came in they gave us some extra food that they had got that, that they had received mistakenly from I think from an order from BJ's um, but we denied the the donation because we didn't know how they had previously refrigerated it you know kept it stored or anything like that so uh, you know we decided not to take that so now we're just taking it from organizations that we know that have already stored the food um, the way it's the, the way it's supposed to be. Uh, Holly, I have a question. Do you distribute only pre-cooked, ready-to-eat meals, or do you hand out groceries too, like canned goods and pasta and things like that? Yep. So the frozen meals that we have are already pre-made. You just need to heat them. But through the donations from uh, St. Anne's, we do have some uh, macaroni and cheese. We have dry items, dry and canned items. So, you know, fruit cocktail, uh, some, some dry cereals and things like that, macaroni and cheese. I, I guess we have a storage problem to some extent, but I was going to sit, think whether we looked into getting food directly from the Worcester County Food Bank. So I don't, so until I, I don't feel that, that we're at that point yet until I work a little closer, closer with uh, St. Anne's Food Pantry, because what we would like to do inevitably um, is to try to get the seniors that go to St. Anne's Food Pantry to come to the senior center specifically um, on a Friday. So right now, everybody from Shrewsbury goes on a Monday. We're looking to try to just get the seniors to go there on Fridays. And that will generate the, you know, the, the friendship and the communication between the seniors. And so they can better understand the other services that we're doing and meet the staff um, that, you know, have the information that is important to them. Any other questions? Okay, I think we're ready to move on to the next topic. Holly? Yep, I'm just trying to find my agenda. So we are Winter Streets, we are at, um, okay, so the, 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 I believe the next one is- AARP grant. So uh, the what? The AARP grant. Um, uh, Elizabeth already mentioned the AARP grant. That one is the Yahoo? Oh, uh, yes, okay. Yep. Um, so going on, so this, now we're down to director's report C, vision statement staffing plan. So um, all of the department heads were asked by town management to come up with a vision statement of their department and a staffing plan for how they see their department in the next five years. So, and we were also asked to include whether or not we thought anybody from our department would possibly be retiring. So, um, I'll start with the vision statement. So the vision statement I took directly from the strategic plan as advised from Kristen Loss, because I know that it is something that um, the board had worked you know, really hard on prior to me coming. And if you notice that on the bottom, there was the addendum. Just I just wanted to make sure that when we gave the vision statement out that anybody that was reading the vision statement knew exactly how those things were being, were going to be accomplished. So I was asked to keep it brief. Um, and of course, I believe that the vision statements will always be updated. My guess would be annually because things change. Um, but before I move on, 
from that. Does anybody have a question on the, the uh, vision statement? Okay. Great. So the staffing plan. So one of the things that I've noticed is that there isn't enough staff members that know what each other person is doing. So for instance, if I was to just quit tomorrow, who's going to know what I was doing if I left? Um, same thing if Cynthia, the transportation coordinator, you know, all of a sudden left tomorrow, how is anybody going to know exactly what she was doing? So when you look at the five-year staffing plan, and, and I just want to add one other thing is one of the things that they suggested is if you have um, a team or staff that, you know, thinks that they're, you're do, they're doing well, um, how can you let them grow up the ladder um, and not have them leave? So one of the things, um, and I can't say it enough, um, is that just Christine, through all of COVID, um, has proven herself um, that she that she works well in all of the pro, the, the the areas of a council on aging slash senior center. So I'm like, how can I keep Christine? Because right now, and I will quote unquote, I'm sorry, Christine, that she said, I don't always want to be an office assistant for the rest of my life. So utilizing the abilities that she has. And then asking, being asked to develop a, a, a staffing plan for the next five years. What I've seen is that what I would like is to have an assistant director be able to understand all of the other, so the things that she already knows, the invoices and the payroll and things like that. But she has proven herself to know how to run programs, know how to talk to volunteers and everything like that. I feel as though that that job description or that um, staff member would better be as an assistant director doing programming and working with staff because she'll be able to already do that. So then you'll notice that the office assistant, I changed to office assistant slash transportation coordinator um, because one of my worries is if Cynthia leaves that position, we have nobody that knows how to do those things. And, and we'll be in a lot of trouble. Um, we, have, we have our part-time assistants that know how to schedule, but they don't know how to um, specifically use like the root match software. So I would like to see the, the office assistant come in and be office assistant slash transportation coordinator so they can better. And I want all of the positions full-time. I don't feel that having a part-time, I, I, and please don't get me wrong, um, Pat and, and Donna are, are, are just amazing at what they do and they're, they're very knowledgeable and things like that, but I would love to see them full-time um, and in the next posi position that, that moves out there because I think it's where we serve so many seniors and where we're looking to project everything that we put out to the community um, it better serves us to have all full-time staff. Um, and that's, if you can see, that's what I've tried to do. I would like to see um, Elizabeth, who has already gone above and beyond my expectations as an outreach coordinator, then move to 37.5 hours. Um, and hopefully we can get some interns to assist her. So if you see my, my, my model, um, it's where could we get that extra help and interns won't be at the cost of the senior center, but you know, it's two birds with one stone. They're able to assist Elizabeth and the COA in more outreach, um, but at no expense. So, um, I know I keep rambling. I apologize. Um, does anybody have any questions on the staffing plan? I think uh, Barbara. Oh, I I have a question on that too, Norma. Norma, just one minute. I think Barbara is about to speak. Just can you wait yeah, one okay. minute? Okay, go ahead, Barbara. <laughs> um, wow, that all sounds very good. Um, that because we have the same problem in education. When somebody leaves, we have to recreate the whole, try to figure out the whole program. So I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Go ahead, Norma. Well, I think it's a good idea to have someone know, what, you know, to be able to fill in for Cynthia if necessary. But I also have a question. Um, if 
uh, the revised plan, instead of two assistants, is now one. Um, so that person will be more on full time. Will that person therefore be receiving benefits? And will the money come out of the general fund or the formula grant? Will it have to be approved by the finance committee? Um, all, all those kind of thoughts run through my mind. Yep. Holly, go ahead. Yep. So all of those have been considered and um, consolidating some of the uh, the positions that are available now. Um, so yes, so all of those people, if they're 37 and a half hours, they will be benefited. Um, and again, I, I believe that this is why that, um, you know, Kevin Mizikar wanted to see our staffing plan. So because obviously the budgets will change going forward. Um, and if they change, how much are they going to change? Um, so all of those things are in, you know, a five, just because I, first of all, just because I put in a five-year staffing plan doesn't mean the five-year staffing plan is actually going to, to happen. Um, but all of those things that I put in are things that we're, we would have to figure out how we're going to, to fund them. Yeah, there are many steps between this and that because the town has to generate a, a profile of what the new position is going to be. It's got to be posted on the web, all kinds of stuff involved. But I guess when Holly goes on vacation this this summer, Christine will run the show and we'll all step back and watch the, watch the fire. <laughs> well, if I may, if I may, it, um, you know, it takes, it takes everybody at the COA to, to run the COA. So it's not even just myself. It's, you know, Donna, Pat, Cynthia, Christine. I was just using it as a, as a, you know, when I mentioned Christine, um, you know, there are certain things that she'll, she'll like if, with the assistant director's position, there are certain things that she will have to achieve in order to get there herself also. So, you know, there's quite the ladder for everybody. Um, and, and I'm not sure, Elizabeth, and this is where I'm a little naive on, you know, how like the LICSWs and LSWs and all of those Ws work um, on how you can, you know, gr grow too. Um, so, you know, I look forward to working with you. I know, you know, she's only been here for a few more months, but, um, you know, I, I, I just want to mention that I think I have a fantastic staff the way that they are right now. Um, and if I was not asked to do a five-year staffing plan, I probably wouldn't have changed anything. Um, but, you know, there's always growth and there's always reasons to have to change things. So, um, but I always want to make sure that my staff, my every single buddy, everybody just knows how much I appreciate them. And I have to say in the last couple of months, because the, the town management has asked us to, um, you know, submit goals and things like that, uh, the goals that the staff, I, ha I haven't shared those with you yet, but just because I haven't talked with them um, with town managers yet. But the goals that the all of the staff members have submitted, um, you know, it gives them an opportunity to grow too. Even our senior staff that have been there with Cynthia, Pat, and Donna, and things like that. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing where the next year goes and you know how all of this works. But like I said, it's not just me when I disappear on vacation. It's it takes everybody. I was going to say uh, the only thing my comment I would have is. As you develop your plan, you have to kind of mesh with their goals and plans too. And that's not easy to do because yeah. they have to move up. They have to move on because they're still young. Right. Well, well, yes. And the other thing is, is that um, the thing that I want to mention is like for Donna and, and Pat, you know, they're seniors themselves. Um, and I know that they've been with the town for many years, but what I would like to see them is to be able to, um, you know, join in on all of the collaboration that's happening throughout. And I don't want to underestimate their abilities because they're a senior and they've been with the, the town. Um, so I, I think that once we're able to share the goals that the, that the staff has put forward, you'll see that there is still room for growth. So, you know, I don't, I don't treat them or look at them any different other than staff members. So, 
Um, but I enjoy, I enjoy them all. We've, especially during COVID, we've all very much formed a very close relationship, I think. And, um, and it's, it's, it's been fun. It's been good. Um, so I know we are just about out of time and unfortunately we didn't get to the policies and procedures. So if it, if it's okay, what I would like to do is have that put on our April agenda, uh, to look at, as well as I will also include on the April agenda, just so everybody knows the updates to the strategic plan with, um, that with, with the meeting that we just had, and we'll share all of those documents with everybody, um, and do some comments then. Sure. So are we, you, you have the nutrition grab and go meals. So that's nothing new to add to that. Um, actually, you know what? So I'll just um, really quick. So the St. Patrick yeah. meals are all accounted for. There's 50 meals going to uh, 50 Shrewsbury seniors. Uh, some of those, I think there's 15 to be delivered um, by our van driver, uh, Dave Metcalf and Pat Babin is going to assist because it's just easier that way. Um, the rest are all being picked up at the Senior Center on uh, St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. Uh, those were all possible by the food donations that we received. Grab and Go is still going extremely well. Um, we're getting, uh, as you know, we're still paying for from January to April, uh, the bills from ESWA for Grab and Go at $2.50. Um, and those are on the budget lines. And let me just check the... Christine, you had a question. Oh, I just want to point out, we um, we gave about 257 meals for January, um, which was fantastic. Um, so I don't have the number for February yet, but I'll have it in the next meeting. Okay, so that's approximately 50 meals a week, right? 150, no. No, that's only 100. It's more than it's 100 meals a week. No, 150. All right, anyway. It's just under 65 meals a week. Yeah. Uh, Zoya had her hand up. Uh, this, was for, this was for the grab and go? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yes, that, that was for grab and go. And the other thing I want to mention before we sign off is uh, we were able to, I don't know if everybody saw this, but we were able to get the approval from uh, town managers, Kevin and Kristen, um, that we were able to, in the last minute, offer some of the AARP tax preparation. Um, and we're, we're presently, we're doing that on Thursdays from nine to, it's supposed to be nine to three, but I think it got over a little early uh, last week. Um, so um, we reached out to Many and before we publicized it, we reached out to a lot of the seniors that had called us for last year that didn't weren't able to get it. Um, and so I think we're pretty, I think we're booked now for all of our days. Um, but I, I am super pleased that we were able to at least offer the service, um, at somehow. And right now, the way it's working is they. They, um, they call the senior center. They were calling the senior center. We were taking their name and some information down. Their information was then sent to AARP. AARP was then calling the seniors back to tell them what time that they could come in. Um, and then they would come to the senior center on their time. The senior center is, is still locked. So there's a notice that says, you know, um, wait in your car until your time and then you can come in. Um, but we're super pleased that we're able to at least offer that at some, at, at even the smallest level. Any other questions? Go ahead, Holly. Do we have, I'm looking at the list here. You've got St. Patrick's Day meals. And... So we're, like, I, like I mentioned, we're going to skip the policies and procedures right now since they can be tabled anyway, since the, scene, the center isn't open. Um, the only other thing is transportation. So transportation is still slow, um, but picking, I mean, it's picking up. Sometimes we have our, we've yet to have four vans out, but we have had the three vans because we're still only taking one person at a time. Um, we have had one driver return. Um, and so that brings our drivers up to, I believe, eight again. Um, and we're just doing our best to try to increase those as 
Christine mentioned, I think at the last meeting, we uh, reordered our transportation flyers that we've sent out uh, to Meals on Wheels recipients and to uh, the Housing Authority, as well as putting that information into our newsletter that, that will all be in the newsletter too. Um, we are resuming fares on July 1st. Um, so we will be collecting fares again. Now, as far as transportation goes, do you have any plans or goals as to what direction, what, what, what are we trying to accomplish? So we're just trying to accomplish getting people out of their house and increasing the ridership. So obviously with the two COA, uh, the two WRTA vans, there are specific, there are only, there are specific ways we can, we can utilize those vans, but we are hoping that um, now with COVID lifting a little bit, that we'll be able to offer some programs using our regular COA vans. Um, there are a couple of other opportunities that have come across the table that might increase transportation, but I'm not at liberty to, to speak of those yet until um, until some things are signed. But again, you know, once we can um, start using the taxi delivery Hackney grant, um, we're hoping that more people will call us for rides. Sawyer? Will the question of being vaccinated or not arise when using the transportation? So those are things that we still have to, um, that I'm still working with town management to ask because, I mean, technically that's a HIPAA question. Um, so I'm not quite sure yet where that, where that falls. Um, my guess will be no, we're not, we won't be allowed, which is the same reason why I said that people will still have to continue, you, you know, using their masks and remaining six feet until otherwise told to do something different. Well, I think this, this matter still has to be resolved. There's so many un, unanswered questions like people who've had vaccinations now they're saying you, it's okay to be in the room and all that kind of stuff. This was CDC's yesterday's announcement or day before yesterday, but uh, things are still fluid, I guess. Yep, I, I'm you know, going to have be... people carry their right, your vaccination card with them. Right, well, I and again, I don't know what is HIPAA re regulations. I don't think we're there that yet. No. Um, I will follow the direction that whatever comes from, you know, um, Town Manager Kevin Mizikar and Kristen. Just to chime in just a little bit, this is Jenny Leonard. Um, in the hospital system, we've all been vaccinated already. We've all had our second shots. Um, and so from the perspective of the CDC guidelines, basically for us means that if you are in a, you can kind of get, have a meeting with people. I mean, we still like to sit, to, you know, you or if you're with somebody that you know, you can actually take your mask off now. We probably will continue to wear the mask in the hospital because we have patients coming in. Um, but just to what, a little bit to what um, Shashi's saying is that keep in mind that airlines are talking about having to have your vaccination card with you. So it, it, it is a very fluid thing in terms of you know, how everyone's going to perceive um, your ability to get around um, going forward. It, it, so just want to throw that in. Yes. Wait and see is the more operative phrase, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, does anybody else have any other items that we have to discuss today? So are we ready to adjourn? Oh, this is Norma. I just wanted to um, go back for a moment to the um, senior center policies. I didn't notice any mention about only allowing um, guide animals into the senior center. Um, so there's already something that exists for town uh, buildings as far as guide animals. So we can certainly include that. Um, and I believe at the moment it is just guide dogs, um, but that is something that we can definitely discuss uh, next month when we discuss the policies and procedures. Oh, all right, all right. I just wanted to bring that up. I didn't know if it was gonna be discussed again. All right. 
Thank you, Norma. Uh, Holly, one other quick question. Have you, when you, uh, in, when you put out stuff about services available, mm -hmm. is transportation yeah. one of them? Do Always. people know that everyone knows that transportation is available and that if they want to come to the senior center or if they want whatever it is that they want to do, they can call and get a ride if they need one? They know that? Yeah. Yes, um, transportation has always been one of our top transportation, nutrition and outreach. Um, okay. That's been ongoing. So, yes. So I had a question. This is mainly Holly and your staff. A shout out to all of you for the great job. Thank you, Zoe. I appreciate that a lot. Yes. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming to this meeting and Christine and Elizabeth and Holly appreciate your inputs and thank you very much for the wonderful job you guys are doing we appreciate it thank you one of you from the board please propose that the meeting be adjourned i make a Louise, proposal for the meeting, the meeting be adjourned yes that's louise I didn't. oh who proposed it i didn't know anyone did i did so you did so you did so i had proposed and louise seconded Louise, are you in favor of adjourning? Yes. Um, let me see. Um, Norma. Yeah, adjourn. Barbara. Yes. Zoya. Yes. Virginia. Yes. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Be safe. Thank you.